This is the Pascaline, a real one, the first ever mechanical calculator. Made in the 1650s by the legend himself, Blaise Pascal. It has eight dials which you use to input the digits of your number. The answers appear in the wheels at the top. It has an original wooden box, but it's not attached to the box. You can just take it out and see the whole mechanism. Pascal made about 20 of these during his lifetime and only nine are known to exist today. And only one is privately owned. This one right here. Not owned by me, of course, but I got this pile of modern knockoffs. It's pretty much the same, right? Blaise Pascal was one of the greats of the French classical period, still remembered today as a child prodigy, mathematician, theologian, gambler, and inventor of the triangle. Even as a kid, Lil Blizzy knew that math is not just about numbers. Numbers can be beautiful, but for most people, and mathematicians included, calculations are kind of boring. A real mathematician wants to think big thoughts about numbers and about other things, but adding numbers from an abstract point of view, there's not a lot to it. And so, before the age of 20, Pascal had the uncommonly good idea that calculations could be mechanized. The story says that it was a gift for his father, who was an accountant. Pascal saw his dad slaving away, adding up stuff by hand, and he decided to make a machine to do it. Today, the remaining nine Pascaline calculators are mostly in museums in Europe, and I'd never seen one before. This particular model was apparently lost for many years until it was bought in an antique shop in 1942. The seller didn't know what it was. They thought it was some kind of music box. But eventually it found its way into the hands of Léon Parce, an engineer, art collector, and Pascal enthusiast. And as it always has, Pascal's machine outlived its owner. So now it's going on a bit of a world tour leading up to a big auction next month. They showed it publicly in Paris a few weeks ago. It's in New York now, and next week it's going to Hong Kong. I knew it was a long shot, but I reached out to Christie to see if a scholar and communicator like myself could get a special look at it, and they never wrote me back. Actually, Christie already made a video with this guy, superstar French mathematician Cédric Villani. Come on, Christie, you're too good for a Z-lister like me. Oh, Villani. Oh, I got a fancy French suit and I'm a better mathematician than you and I got the Fields Medal so I get to touch l'original Pascaline with my bare French hands. All right, it's fine. I get it. Even behind glass, it was still an amazing thing for me to see. It's in really excellent condition sitting there next to the wooden box with, oh, look at this guy again. The Pascaline is often called the first calculating machine and I guess that's mostly true. Of course, the abacus is much older, but there isn't really any mechanism in there. Every part is manipulated by the user themselves. The sector had already existed for a while. I made a bit about that one, you know what I'm saying? And the Gunter scale and the slide rule had just appeared around the same time in the 1620s. But Pascal's box was really something new. A calculator that does all the work for you. And how does it work? I don't know, there's like some stuff in there, I guess. This is how basically all computing machines would be presented going forward. The user interface gives no clue about how the machine works, and there's only a bare minimum of knowledge needed in order to use the machine properly. Since I'm apparently not fancy enough to touch the real one, my knockoffs here will have to do for the demo. This is the Sterling Dial-O-Matic, based directly on the Pascaline. Each digit has its own wheel, which shows the answers. This is the units, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. So to enter 572, it looks like this. Now, if you want to add, you just dial in something else. Like to add five, I just dial in five more, and the answer digits spin to add it in. It's bonehead simple, really. Each digit is on a wheel, and they spin when you spin them. The fancy part, really the only fancy part, is the carry mechanism. Inside the box is some extra business where when you turn any digit past 9, it bumps a little thing that carries a 1 into the next digit. On the dial-o-matic, you can really feel when the carry mechanism engages. That one click is harder to push than all the others because you're pushing on an extra thing on the inside. Sterling made several different versions of this little thing. Here's a cute one for the kids. Here's the dial-a-chevy deal, which was some kind of promo item. And here's a transparent one so you can see how it works. They call it Pascal Type Calculator. And I even have the original instructions 
and original transparent stylus. This one is pretty hard to find and it was sent to me by a faithful viewer. Thanks so much. You can see each wheel has a little tab on the back and when that thing goes all the way around, it hits a little gear that clicks the next wheel by one. Huh. It'll even carry two digits at once, like 99 to 100, although you can really feel the friction when that happens. Carrying all four at once is a bit of a struggle, but it works. I also have the Kess Ad, eh? pretty much the same, but a lot smaller. And here's the lightning adding machine from the 1940s, which has seven wheels. It's got springs in there to lock the wheels into position. Sounds and feels great to use. Unfortunately, the friction is a bit too much. Doing a triple carry is pretty rough, and carrying all seven just doesn't work at all. The oldest one I have is the Ad O Meter from the 1920s. This thing is heavy, and it's got this ruler on the edge, which is cute, but man, you could seriously hurt someone with this. It's mostly more of the same, nice springy digits. This one probably has the most satisfying feel. Again, the multiple carries don't work too well, but hey, I have the original stylus because it has a slot to hold it in. Nice. One thing the modern ones do better than Pascal's is subtraction. The gear arrangement on the Sterling machine is more or less reversible, so you spin the wheels backwards to do a subtraction. And it even uncarries correctly. So if you want to subtract, you use the little numbers and you turn the dial backwards. The little numbers are called the nines complements of the big numbers, because each pair of numbers always adds up to nine. But you don't really need to think about that. The Pascaline can't subtract nicely like this because the carry mechanism isn't reversible. I'm pretty sure you can spin the wheels backwards, like it won't break the machine, but you won't get the right answers. Instead, you have to switch the machine into subtraction mode, which you do by moving this bar down. It's kind of like popping a doink, isn't it? It doesn't affect the mechanism at all. It just reveals an entire second row of answer digits, which equal the nine complements of the other answer digits. So to do a subtraction, you dial in one number as usual, and then you dial the other number using the complement digits. It's a little clunky and you have to think kind of carefully to do it right. Makes you wonder why Pascal didn't just make the carry mechanism reversible like the more modern ones. I mean, it's not that complicated. He probably could have figured it out, right? Well, Pascal actually had more ambitious plans. He decided to give the Pascaline a special mechanical feature that these modern ones don't have, a stored energy carry mechanism. Somehow Pascal had already anticipated the problem of friction in a multiple carry. This is actually an issue in pretty much any mechanical adding machine. This one with chains, this one with big discs, it's a basic feature of the carry mechanism. No carries happen most of the time until that one single point, and then right here I gotta crank it extra hard to grind out the carry. That one step suddenly requires lots more energy than all the others. Somehow Pascal anticipated and solved this problem in his very first machine. Instead of nine easy cranks followed by a hard one, the machine gradually stores up little bits of extra energy as you turn it, and then releases it for the carry. Each wheel is connected to a little weight that he called the sautoir, and as you turn the dials around, the sautoir gradually gets pulled up, and when you pass the nine, it drops to make the carry. Hey, am I the only one who thinks they're touching it way too much? So anyway, when the carry happens, instead of a big grind, it's a release. Really, the carry happens almost all on its own. Pascal bragged that his machine could, in theory, be made as big as you wanted, with no hit to usability. This is kind of overkill for Pascal's machine. I mean, back then, I don't think anybody really wanted a machine with a huge amount of digits. But the stored energy carry mechanism would eventually become a key component of more modern mechanical machines. These things really need to be able to do big carries without any extra mechanical issues. In later years, the gravity-driven sautoir was replaced with springs that store the energy. Check out all the carry springs on my comptometer. That's what I'm talking about. In my opinion, the sautoir is the real triumph of Pascal's design. Extremely forward-thinking and far more advanced than it needed to be. Each one of the nine Pascalines which exist today are unique, handmade objects with little variations. A lot of them were all brass, but this one has a wooden box that it can pull right out of. On the front here is the traditional coat of arms of the Pascal family, which typically features a helmet above a lamb carrying a banner. 
It's hard to see, but there's also a tiny Pascal lamb stamped into the brass on the side here. There's one major thing that sets this particular model apart from all the others. The basic model had six or eight wheels with 10 spokes each, each one representing a digit of the number. But this specific machine is the only surviving Pascaline meant for surveying. It's built to use the traditional French units for distance. We have five base 10 digits on the left for the standard unit, which is the toise, then a base six wheel for the pied, and then two base 12 wheels for the pouce and the ligne. Most of the Pascalines have numbers etched into the brass near the wheels, but this one doesn't seem to have any. Maybe it was inked on, but then it rubbed off by centuries of French fingers. One common hassle with this general design is that it's a pain to clear it back to zero. My ad o meter has a clearing bar, but most of these modern ones don't, and neither did the Pascaline. Pascal's instructions to clear to zero was to dial in nine in each digit and then add one. This causes a big multiple carry across the whole machine, which ends up giving you zero. Pascal put in a little design detail to help out with this. Each wheel has two adjacent spokes with marks on them. On this model, they're kind of fancy stamped patterns. This marks the nine digit. So if you put this one down to the bottom position, it'll set the machine to all nines. I was actually expecting for the brass inside of each wheel to be scratched from the stylus going around, like you can see on my lightning adding machine, but I don't really see much of anything, so maybe they really have been just doing it with their fingers all these years. Come on, at least put some gloves on, Christy. It's a remarkable machine, really. One of the first baby steps towards the technologies that would eventually change the world. And in about a month, it'll have a new owner. Could it be you? No, but hey, whoever it is might be my last chance to get my insufficiently French hands on it. Whoever you are out there, don't do me like Christy did. Call me up. Invite me over. I'll bring dessert. I'll bring gloves for both of us. Mm -hmm.